Hi, this is Shady and today we will discuss the Uchimata. Now, I've done a lot of Uchimata analysis in the past. Um, Kosei Inoue, Joshiro Maruyama and Shohei Ono. I've talked about Kosei Inoue's four types of Uchimata. Um, I've talked about the entries, the several entries, um, but all these three, they share this very monumental uh, picturesque Uchimata. Travis Stevens tried to do an analysis, uh, Decoding Judo recently did one as well, a brilliant one. So I've been uh, researching to see a uh, little bit of details and I finally stumbled upon the one detail that actually makes it this great Uchimata and uh, why it is categorized as Ashiwaza rather than Koshiwaza. So um, it's a detail that in my opinion changes everything once we understand it because um, it is simply a matter of angle, it is simply a matter of entry um, that makes it uh, a great Uchimata. It's an entry that in my opinion has its flaws but once you understand it, it makes Uchimata rather perfect and the stuff that Kano Sensei has implemented still lives on till this day and we're gonna see why. So uh, what really piqued my interest is this video by Hanpan TV. They were talking about entering from 90 degrees, not turning your back all the way at 180. Here you see the examples. Oh no, uh, you have his back towards us, not towards the ceiling. So uh, the finish rather should be uh, when you turn the extra 90 degrees because this is where you plant uh, and this is what Neil Adams said. Uh, for different reasons. Uh, Mariyama, the new Japanese on the scene and he does this amazing movement into the Uchimata and he really jacks his opponents up but doesn't quite have control with the hands. On the other side of that, in the under 81 kilograms, Guerrero, he has the same kind of movement in but he absolutely has amazing control with the hands. The hands and the feet and the body all working together. Let's have a look at the two examples and see how they both work. So Neil Adams criticized Maruyama for this Uchimata because he didn't have a finish. The finish is actually should be the rotation of the extra 90 degrees. Here you see 90 degrees. If he rotated like towards the ground and planted his hand firmly he would have gotten the upon rather than a yuko so let's see other examples uh here you see in uh i think this is osaka yes uh, he enters at 90 degrees uh you see his back is turned towards us rather than the ceiling so uh this is the entry and once you enter at 90 degrees you actually lift with your leg rather than your hip let's see look it's 90 degrees 100 percent uh finished with tomo inage the greatest uh, combo of modern judo so uh the key detail is to enter at 90 degrees in hanpan tv they actually explain that you actually bring him towards you there's no need for like a big kuzushi uh, and then once you like go down uh, 90 degrees, like you take your upper body down or your head almost touching, that's where like it becomes very easy to lift uke and with the help of your leg, it becomes almost effortless. That's why uh, Neil Adams criticized Maruyama because there was no kuzushi and there was no finish. It was just a big lift as he said and this is coming from the contact of the upper body and uh the lift of the leg but there's no kuzushi or like there's no uh finish with the hands only rotation of uh, 90 degrees here oh no if he does the same thing he would have gotten a far better finish let's see a great example in a way actually looks turns 90 degrees but turns the rest of the 90 degrees to 180 degree in order to plant nicholas gill and have a perfect dip on look 90 degrees rotates the other in order to plant him for a pawn. So his finish is actually the best out of all the three. That's why he's the boss and that's why he is the greatest. So is this some revolutionary detail that's been added uh, in the recent years? No, this is actually from the early days of the Kodokan. You see, uh, in Nage no Kata, the Uchimata, you actually turn Uke in a way that he's next to you. Here you see. 
you are turning him in a way to square him off to become perpendicular and as he's coming forward you reap the thigh you don't lift with your hips because here they explain that if you lift with your hips it becomes hanegoshi so hanegoshi is not just uh, the leg placed on the uke's calf or on uke's knee but rather it's the lift with the hips and guiding with the leg so you have to actually lift here he explained here that it's not a lift with the hips it's actually it becomes hanegoshi so uh it, you just square him perpendicular and just reap the inner thigh hence it's ashiwaza so when you lift like maruyama or ono it's actually lifting with the side of the thigh rather than the hips hence why it's ashiwaza and not koshiwaza let's see an example of koshiwaza and that is harai goshi harai goshi you turn 180 degrees check this out and thus you are lifting with your hips not with the uh, side of your thigh like uchimata and thus it's a koshiwaza um, if you like do your leg between uke's legs but lifting like harai goshi it's actually a koshiwaza and in my opinion this is hanegoshi and not uh, uchimata so I don't know why in a lot of these demonstrations people do hanegoshi and say it's uchimata even the japanese i know that they know the difference but it's a mind boggling that they do that and i'll show you an example later so uh, but the kodokan actually shows the difference in their new videos which i will of course show as well but here you see that the difference like turning 90 degrees you are actually lifting with your leg like uchimata but when you turn 180 it becomes a koshiwaza so uh, kano sensei implemented everything here you see like it says uchimata and does hanegoshi like lifts with the legs with the with the hips 180 degrees i don't know why they do that this is uh, kodokan hanegoshi so here you see turning 180 degree very similar to Ryunsuke Haga and then doing the leg the same thing so I don't know why they say it's Uchimata and they do Hanegoshi can someone please give me an answer I'll probably reach out to Shintaro Higashi he'll probably give me an answer but this is mind-boggling that they actually why is this a thing um, let's see this is Kodokan Uchimata he goes to the side and lifts with the side of his upper thigh check this out closely it's not the hips you can see like the belt is completely outside we can see it so this is not a koshiwaza uh, this is an ashiwaza so that 90 degree where you are perpendicular to uke is a crucial detail for uchimata you can have that incredible lift you just, but uh, the key thing to remember is that you need to turn the once uke is lifted you need to turn that extra 90 degrees where your back becomes facing the ceiling and, and thus you can have a better finish like in a way so you saw ono struggling with the finish you saw maruyama struggling with the finish but in a way he planted nicholas gill rather uh masterfully because of that extra rotational turn towards the end once nicholas gill was lifted so uh, this thing that you know they do hanegoshi and they say uchimata it's just it really like piques my curiosity for some reason like why is this a thing i know they know the difference the it's not like i'm saying i know better of course not but even the kodokan you saw the difference between the hanegoshi which they do in the uh, demonstrations uh, and they say it's uchimata but it's rather hanegoshi uh, they did it and they named it hanegoshi and then you saw the uchimata he's lifting with this thigh uh, they like the side of the thigh which is actually pretty thick if you have muscular legs so it lifts rather easily kind of like the hips uh, but people think that they lifted with the hips when they actually rotated 90 degrees and lifted with the side of the thigh so as you saw with the pictures like uh, teddy rene and ono uh, you, like you saw uh, maruyama lifting abe trying to lift abe before that tomonage he had his back towards the side rather than towards uh, the ceiling so if you have anything else to add let me know down below this is a very intriguing topic uh, the uchimata it's so amazing how kano set it up in nage no kata in order to understand that you have to enter perpendicularly the man was absolutely a genius so uh, 
if you have anything else to add let me know down below also don't forget to uh check out uh josh simon's shop for t-shirts and also historical articles on his website i'll leave it in the description down below also consider supporting me on patreon i have uh exclusive content for the patrons only this was shady and thank you for listening